So with that said, we're going to start with basically a straight line down the center of the page really lightly. In fact, so lightly that I shouldn't be able to see it on your paper. You're drawing it as light as you can. And then we'll try to make the right side of the face look like the left side of the face. Does that make sense to you guys? Give me a thumbs up if you think you understand what I'm talking about. Perfect. That helps me. So how are we doing, Mrs. Peters? Are we close? Go ahead and start. Okay, so this is your white piece of paper. This is where I'm gonna demonstrate. This is just where I'm gonna talk to you about it. Sometimes I will pull this paper away and do some drawing on it to explain things. But this is the paper you're going to look at when I draw something on there, that's where you wanna start copying it. So what I like to do is just walk you through it, like step one, step two, step three. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do and do this as light as you can, you can also do it with an eraser because a red eraser will actually leave a little line. But if you can't see it, then as light as you can, you wanna draw a line down the middle. Now, if drawing big is hard for you, this is like photocopy paper off your parents' printer. But if you wanna do it on a smaller piece of paper so it's easier for you, go ahead. I'm going to press pretty hard just because I want to make sure you can see my lines, but you should draw as light as you can because otherwise you have a line down the middle of his face. Okay, you don't really want that. Now, if you look at Darth Vader, his head is a human head that's covered with his whole hood and mask. So he looks very proportional to a person, except people don't have super sharp pointy chins like he does. So, but other than that, he's pretty similar. So what we're gonna do is by putting this curve at the top of your head, you've got almost half of him done, the top of his head. So what I wanna do is I wanna come up here to the middle and before you go down, try to go over and then curve downward and then come over on the other side and go over and then curve downward. Now, don't make yours look exactly like mine. Make yours so that it's symmetrical. So the top of his head on the left looks like the top of his head on the right. And the distance between the line and the side of the head here looks like it is on the other side. So you're trying to look kind of like a half of a cereal bowl on top of his head, upside down. The key is try not to go straight down too quickly. Go over and then down and over and then down. Okay, so that's the top of his head. Now, what he has after that is this big hood piece that goes off the charts here. But we're gonna ignore it by now because we're gonna go down into his cheekbones on both sides. So we're gonna come down, do not hit the middle line, okay? We're gonna come and curve in. And then when you look at it, we're trying to get this space right here. So if we go in too much, we can just bring it out like this because this is where we're gonna put this triangle at the bottom of his chin. And notice that I went in a little too sharply, so I'm just gonna erase it and bring it out. Now I'm gonna look, is the distance from here to here close to here to here? That's called symmetry. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I wanna be close. I don't want this to be like a half inch and this to look like it's three inches, that'll look weird. So I want it to be close here, okay? Once I think it looks pretty good, what I've drawn over here is this line going down to here. That's where I am. So what I need now is a straight line parallel with the bottom of the page coming across his face. Okay, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna pause for just a second for those of you that just came in. What we started with is a line down the center of the face. And this is for a line drawing on Darth Vader. Then we're gonna go over and down and over and down. We're trying to make the right side of the face look like the left side of the face, the hardest part of the whole lesson. Then you're gonna angle in slightly on the left and angle in slightly on the right. Where this line right here represents that line right here in between his mouth space. Next thing we wanna look for is proportions. We want this little triangle of his chin 
to be shorter, that means from the top to the bottom, than the mouthpiece up to the nose. So this space is bigger than this space, but we're gonna go ahead and put it in. So what you wanna do is not make a sharp V, but make kind of a flat V. Notice how I went ahead and put in that triangle to the center. And you'll notice you guys, I'm not perfectly symmetrical. And I guarantee it's still gonna look okay. Okay, so main thing is don't make it too pointy. That means a sharp point. You want it more of a flat point. Then up above each of these corners, I want a pretty nice size circle. These are like these bolts or screws on his mouth, holding his mouth together. I don't really know the purpose of them without taking his mask apart, but they are in all the pictures. And I'm just putting a circle inside a circle right there. Okay, hopefully you can kind of see where we're headed. We've put these in, we've got our triangle. So now we're gonna put our lower triangle inside a triangle. So what we do is we just parallel the lines. And remember, you should draw this really lightly so that if you mess up, it's super easy to erase. If you carve into your paper by pressing deeply, it's hard to erase because you've actually dented the paper. So if you notice, there's a space on all sides. So you basically have another triangle inside a triangle. And I'm just gonna erase that line inside my triangle because it's never gonna be needed. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this mouth portion up here and his nose. And the easiest thing to do is, is to go ahead and make this inside cheekbone line where his mouthpiece is, okay? Because he's not really human, it's hard to do that. We have to leave enough room here in the middle for the nose. So I'm gonna start this space here. If you look up here, should be less space than here. So I'm decided, I want this to end about right here and I'm putting a giant dot so you can see it, but don't put that dot, just put a little teeny one. So is this space bigger than this space? If it is, you're gonna be okay. You just want this to be a little taller than that one, okay? Once you have that, put a slight curve for the bottom of his nose in. And then a tall curve, which goes straight up and then curves at the top. And this is for the front of his nose. And remember to make it slightly because if you decide later it's too small, it's easy to fix, okay? Now we're gonna come from this bolt all the way up to the nose, but not touch it. So I'm gonna come out just a tiny bit on each side and I'm gonna angle to the inside of the bolt and I'm gonna angle to the inside of the bolt. So notice I didn't touch the nose, but it got super close. And the reason is, is there's this ridge that goes around this nose piece that shows the edge of it. So I wanna get that in. So it's basically a, like a tunnel with a tunnel, <laughs> two tunnels on top of each other. And then I'm gonna erase this middle line and this middle line, cause I don't need them anymore. I've got them pretty much lined up. Sometimes I'll put in these big guide dots that look like big dots, you guys. It's so I make sure you can see, but don't ever put big dots in, they're hard to erase. Just put in little dots. Okay, so now I've got this mouthpiece going on here. I need another line here, but some of it's gonna get erased. So this line should be really light. So you're gonna go ahead and put a line here, parallel, but do it really lightly because some of it will get erased and it'll just make your life easier if you can do it lightly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these little vertical lines in that are on his mask. Now, if you end up with more than me, it's okay but you're gonna to try to be something similar. So first thing, I'm gonna make two vertical lines right next to each other to that line. Skip a space, two vertical lines right next to each other. And if you notice, they both look like they're coming out of his nose. If it looks like his nose is running, you got it right. <laughs> now you wanna repeat that until you run out of room. So I'm gonna go move over, do two lines, Move over to two lines. Don't worry if this space is very small or a lot bigger, it's not a big deal. 
So you'll see I have a lot of vertical lines here. Don't feel like you have to count them and make sure you have as many as me. No one will ever care. They won't really matter. Okay, next thing is we're gonna start with the whole nose piece right here. This is the length of his nose. It should be about as long as this, this little arch tunnel. So you think we kind of doubled it. So we're gonna come to the outside here. Look at how I'm on the outside of that edge and I'm gonna slightly go in and I'm gonna slightly go in. Actually, I could have done a better job going in a little bit here. Slightly go in, because you want his nose to go from wide to a little bit narrower. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put a curve on top of it because I want his nose bridge. This is like the, the top of your nose as it goes up to your eyeballs. I want that to look curved so it looks rounded. I'm erasing the line inside. So what we are doing is this curve right here. Now the rest of his face is kind of like molded plastic. So some places it comes forward, some places it recesses into his face. So we're just working with the lines of it right now. We will try to get some of those dimensions later when we have extra time. But right now we're just going to work with the lines of it. We're going to leave his little cheekbones okay, and we're going to get his eyeballs in because those are important. So the inside of his eyes are vertical lines. Can you see it here? And in between them is this kind of section that's kind of like molded plastic that looks a little bit like a tube, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make those. We're gonna go up, curve around and down, up, curve around and down, up, curve around and down. And you need three of those. Now, I've seen people draw it with more. So if that space looks really small, you could always put another. So if you know this, but a lot of the Darth Vader's from the beginning episode to the last episodes, he changed a little bit over time. So it kind of depends on which picture you look at exactly. But I guarantee no matter how you do it, it's going to look like him. So a couple little lumps right here. That's these little sections here. Once we've got those in, we can start with his eyeballs. We're gonna be putting in this tallest curve first around his eyes. Now here's where it's important that the eyes are similar in size. So each curve, you wanna look at it, how long it is, how high it is, how wide it is. You don't wanna look at mine, you wanna look at yours. One of your eyes should look like the other eye, not like my eye. Your two eyes should look the same. So what you're gonna do once we've got this space is you gotta make sure you make a nice curve up. Okay, now I'm gonna go on the other side and make sure I make a nice curve up. And then I'm gonna look at my curves and say, okay, are they close to looking like they belong to the same person? That's what's important. Does this line look a lot like that one? Is it about the same length or does one look like it's too short? You can go ahead and erase this line up above because it's probably going to mess you up now and you don't need it anymore. If he looks a little bit like some sort of insect, you're doing a good job because he looks kind of funky right here. Okay, now we're going to skip a space and put in a little vertical line here. So if you skip a space and come down, skip a space and come down. Notice this does not touch any other line. This is the eye socket piece. This is the pieces around it. So you, there's a space here and then the edge of the eye. So two vertical lines on each side of that little snake thing or centipede, whatever you wanna describe it as. Okay, now something that you should be aware of is the curve at the bottom of this line is pretty flat. There's not a lot to it. I also think it would be better if you made his two eyes too big than too small. So if you wanna err on anything, err on too big. If they look too small, just make them bigger. So you want a very flat smile, okay? So let me show you what, that, what I mean by that, is you're not dipping very much a very flat smile, 
and a very flat smile. And then you're gonna look at them and see if they look like they belong to the same person. So this line is pretty flat and this line is pretty flat. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, the closer it is to symmetrical, which means one side's like the other, the less frustrated you'll be. Now we're starting to finally have some eyeballs. If this is equal to this, then you can put the top in and meet at the corner. And some, here's a little trick, you guys. Put your pencil on it like this and see if your line is pretty close to straight across. So I put my pencil so it touched that dot and that dot to see if it looks like I don't have one eye up looking funky, okay? Okay, if you're close, then you're gonna go up slightly and down, up slightly and down. Then you're gonna check out your eyeballs and say, how should I change them or am I good enough? If you notice right now, you guys, do you see that my right eye is slightly bigger than my left? I don't think it's enough to matter. I'm gonna leave it. I know it, but it's not enough to matter. It won't be after I do all the rest of the stuff to it. So this space right here is this in your picture. Now, if this upper line touches this, you're gonna have to raise it higher. So look at this upper line and make sure it doesn't touch. If it does, just move it now. That's one of the reasons we didn't finish it. So you could do that, okay? Now we're gonna angle in the corner down and angle in the corner down. So the outside right and the outside left, angling down. Now I bet you guys know what's gonna happen. This has to connect to this. That may mean that you have to change this a little bit, or it may mean you have to change this one because you don't wanna touch the eye. So you're gonna come around like this and you're gonna come around like this. Feel free to erase and move things a little bit because this should never touch, okay? This is actually a piece of plastic that bent, you know, is bent one way and the eyes bent the other way. Corner, it's super easy, you guys. You're gonna go from here to the outside corner, from here to the outside corner, but what you have to notice is it goes from narrow to wider. But because this line is longer and you're starting in the corner, it's not too hard. So just watch me. I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to go to wider and I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to go to wider. And you got the hardest parts done. It's easy from now on. So it's just putting little lines in from now on. It's not that hard. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of bone structure under his eyes. So you're gonna go to this corner and you're gonna angle in and this corner and angle in. Don't worry if yours is a little different angle as long as the line is close to the same length. And then you're gonna angle in or up like a V shape, but don't touch the eye, okay? Angle up, but don't touch the eye. You're just putting in, think of it like the bags under your eyes. Okay, do that whole symmetry thing. Do you think it looks close enough? Are you happy with it? Okay, now don't touch these lines up here, okay? You're just gonna skip it and you're gonna be right next to the nose. Skip a space right next to the nose. So you're paralleling the nose. So this line is parallel to this line and this line's parallel to this line. You're going right next to the nose, but you're not touching any other lines. These are just free open lines. So you're gonna angle down to the screw, but not touch it. So you're gonna go down to the screw, but don't touch it. 
down to the screw, but don't touch it. Follow that line. Okay. Okay, so you know where those bags of the eye is? You're going to parallel those lines. So you're going to skip a space and you're going to go out and a little bit past. Parallel it. You're not touching any other lines and out and a little bit past. So these two lines are parallel and you went past it just a little bit. And the next line is super easy. You're just connecting them. Now, if this space here is huge and this space here is small, just change this line. You want this space to be similar to this space. Doesn't have to be exact, but if there's a real big difference, you just move the line in or out, whatever you think looks better. Okay, now one more line and we'll be ready to put on his hood. You're just gonna make a triangle V down to the bottom and a triangle V down to the bottom, just like that. Show all those bones and stuff. Now we're gonna put on his hood. And when I say hood, I'm talking about this thing up here. So first thing we need to do is put this beam, or I don't know what you call it. It's a piece of plastic that sticks up above, okay? So that piece right here, we're gonna put in first. So what we have to do is we have to skip a space and when you skip a space, you want to be above here. So if this is his like eyelid or eyebrows, you want to be above it. So you're just putting in a flat curve right here in the middle, like that. Make sure you skipped a pretty nice piece of space. And this is super easy. Go straight up to the top of his head and straight up to the top of his head. Now, because this is a piece of plastic that sticks above his forehead, you have to go above his head here slightly so that it looks like it's taller than the other piece of plastic. So all I did was make a curve at the top. And I'm gonna erase anything inside of it. To make this hood portion look really cool, what we wanna do is we wanna find this spot on his hood. So all we have to do is connect it. So I, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this corner of his eye, go straight out and find a little dot. You see where I am? Now I want you to go to the corner of this eye, go straight out and find a little dot. Don't put in a big giant dot. That was for you to see where I am. So you're touching the side of his face. Everybody see that? Okay, so super easy. All you have to do is curve up and hit that dot. Okay, so I'm gonna go up and hit that dot. And I'm gonna go up and hit that dot. And all of us are gonna make this curve a little different. Not that big a deal as long as this curve looks a lot like that curve. So look at your curves and see if they look pretty good together. I had to adjust one because I didn't like the way it looked. So I'm just curving and hitting that dot. Now we're gonna do it again, but it's wider here and narrower here. So I'm just gonna be a little bit bigger here. And then when I get down here, I'm gonna be a little closer together a little bigger up here. And when I get down, I'm gonna be a little closer together. And if you think that looks pretty good, you may stop. This is a good place for me to pause while you catch up. Now, those of you that are waiting and maybe you're super fast, what you can do is there are no lines in this space I'm gonna have you erase at this point. So if there's anything in here that you drew really lightly before, if you wanna take your pencil while you're waiting and just press hard and make them darker, this is a great time to do it while you're waiting, okay? So if you're bored right now because I haven't gone on, just start darkening your lines. You can darken any line.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and finish him, okay? So the next thing we need to do is put in this neck structure. So if you look here, there's some neck that's going on here. The first thing we're gonna do is come down to the screw. Okay, all eyes up here on the screen. This little screw right here, you're gonna slightly angle up and slightly angle up from the screw. Try to make this line about the same length as that one and the angle up about the same. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna angle up into his cheekbone and up into his cheekbone. You want these two spaces to look similar in size. So those two triangles should look similar. Not perfect, neither do mine, but close. Okay, he has this big old piece of plastic in his neck that that's what this thing is right here. So this is actually a big piece overlapping another big piece. So what we're gonna do is come in slightly here just a little bit in from the corner and make him a neck. Don't make it much longer than his chin. Your tendency is gonna to be, be too long. So if you look here, I want you guys to see something. If I drew a line straight across here, it's about the same space. Do you guys see that? So you don't wanna make it too longer than that point. So here's my point. So how long do I want this to be? Do you see how I made it too long? It's really easy to make it too long. And then I'm going to come in on this side. So I want this to look almost like a straight line here, even though it won't be, on how length it, is, length it is. So if you drew a line here, it would be straight across. That's how long that neck is. But because your head is, a, his neck is a cylinder, okay? If you think about it, it's kind of like a coffee can down here or a tuna fish can. What you have to do is make this slightly curved underneath. That's what's gonna make it look longer. It's not the sides, it's the part that's slightly curved under his chin. Now, those of you that like Star Wars, after you draw him, if you wanna try one on your own, CP3O, is that how you say his name? He's got a similar face kind of structure going on. You might wanna try it on your own. Okay, so he has these little rolls underneath his neck. It kind of looks like the piping that you see on the dryer in your house. And so that's what gives him the joint here. So we're gonna come in and just make a curve here, curve in, make sure it's smaller. And then you, all you do is make a curve here. Think of this kind of like a snake that has like little segments or a centipede. This is where you can make the neck look like you could bend it. So curve, curve, you want at least three of these. There's kind of like a little tube on top of a tube. Now, if you look at this drawing here, I did a, another one kind of underneath, just to drop it so you could kind of see a piece of one underneath like that. So that's his neck. And we're gonna go ahead and put his shoulders in. So we're gonna come all the way up to the neck here, okay? And you're just gonna angle it a little bit and angle it a little bit and just run it off your page. Now, just depending on time, on how much we do down at the bottom, cause that's something you guys could look it up later. We're gonna go ahead and finish the hood and then see how we're doing on time, okay? So let's get this hood done. That's this piece right here. Notice on it, you guys, it goes from wide to narrow, like a point, and wide to narrow. So the main thing is let's get this first curve right, and then we just bring the other one into it. So we got to decide where do we want it to end. We want to end here and skipping down here. So that's where I'm going. And I'm looking at the space from here to here and making sure it's similar. I think I'll move that one out a little bit. Now, what do I do? I go angle with a curve at the end. Okay, you guys need to watch me do this. Okay, so make sure you're looking at the screen right now, not just listening. Okay. So just make Check this screen. Look, look at the screen. Make it kind of go straight. Keep watching me. I'll show it to you how I do it. Straight, straight. 
I'm gonna check it, see if it looks close. And then I'm gonna curve and come back in, curve and come back in. Go for it. Realize that I'm on the lower line. Did everybody notice that? I'm on the lower line. Now, if you look at the original Darth Vader, this hood is shorter in the earlier episodes, and which is this black part, and it's longer in the later episodes. So if yours looks shorter or longer, it won't really matter. You say, oh, I did the beginning one. Oh, I did the end one. <laughs> no one will know. But it does change in length. Okay, now we just take the upper line and we wanna, right when it turns right here, we want it to disappear. So we're just gonna go follow the line and disappear, follow the line and disappear. And then we're gonna erase the overlapping line of what's underneath. And you've done his face, is that exciting? Awesome job, you guys. That's a lot of detail, super a lot of detail. So, I think the other thing that's really important is this mesh work. Think of it kind of like a screen in your bedroom window. You're trying to create that texture. So all you have to do is put in a bunch of parallel lines like this, going across one direction. Don't worry about how close they are. Then go the other way. Voila, you have a screen. Try not to go up and down, go diagonal. It'll always look better if you go diagonal. And if you look at his pictures, it looks very diagonal. How's everybody doing? Are you impressed with yourselves? I hope you are. So once you've got it all drawn, you guys, you do wanna darken all your lines, make them all nice and clean and crisp, okay? But I'm going to go down here. So everybody, I want you to do this now. We're going to put a little bit of his hood, uh, his, I guess, his um, coat on. So just make yourself a nice big curve that you can erase like this. A nice big curve. Okay. Now, the center of it's a chain. The center of it's a chain. But that helps you put the chain in a curve. So I'm gonna just start in the middle with a rectangle. And then I'm gonna draw two lines right on the line and put in another rectangle, two lines and another rectangle. And then I'm gonna go the other direction, two lines, which is like the joint and a rectangle. And you're following that line. That way it'll put them in curves. I'd say you want at least five to give him that chain. Once you've got your chain and it looks pretty good to you, all you have to do is put a rectangle inside a rectangle. So you just put one inside and fill in the inside rectangle. Now, if you're gonna do it in ink, you do it in ink later. If you're gonna do it in crayon, you can do it in crayon later. I'm just gonna do it in pencil right now so you guys can see it really well. I just put a little rectangle inside a rectangle. Then where the chain stops is where the coat is or the cloak. So you just start at the last chain and pull it off the page and the last chain and pull it off the page. So this part here is the coat or the cloak. And I think I'm gonna stop there, okay? And if you guys are getting tired and you don't want a bunch of pointers on how to do more and how to do more shading, because that's where I'm going to go next to, that's fine. You've got your basic line drawing. You could have fun from here. But I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff that some of you will want to do. Some of you won't. It will be on the website so that you guys can look it up because you can look at how I did it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I did it. Okay. So the first thing is once I have a line drawing that I really like, if I'm going to stay with pencil, I go in and I darken all the lines, get them nice because I'm going to start with a pencil. 
Okay. Then I start thinking where he's the blackest because remember he's completely black. So if you do everything solid black, you will have a black mush. It'll look terrible. You have to show highlights. So this is going to intimidate you at first, but look at this one. So this is my finished drawing in pencil. To do this one, I used a sketching pencil, which you can actually get at Michael's. The schools, a lot of the schools had them, but it's called a Prismacolor Ebony Pencil. It usually comes in a pack of two and they're not very expensive. But to get it this dark, I needed this pencil. Now, if I use a regular school pencil, you guys, this is regular school pencil shading. It looks pretty cool. That's just your school pencil. But if you wanted to get super dark, you have to use a darker pencil. So that's what that is. And then the other thing that I used on this is called a stump. And it's basically wadded up newspaper, but you wanna buy one because it's nice and hard. And you can also get those at Michael's and you can get all these things at, at Staples. So if you have these in your house, is that great? But if you don't and you really wanted to do it, that's how this one is. So that's why I'm giving you the information. So if you notice, you guys, he is black, completely black but I left a lot of things lighter so that you could see him. If you don't do that, nobody can see him. So I did the darkest area with my darkest pencil and then I got lighter and lighter and lighter. And what I do when I do a drawing like this is I start out really light and I just keep getting darker and darker and darker till he starts looking better. So that's the pencil one. Keep watching, I'm gonna show you guys some more. Now this one, I know you guys have crayons I didn't finish it, but you believe this is crayon? This is black crayon and blue crayon. Can you guys see the blue? So right here, I colored his whole face practically blue. And in some places I made him more blue. And if you notice this side isn't darkened and this side is mostly done. So what I did was just kind of show you where I was. I went in here and I just take my crayon and I just lightly colored the whole thing in you know, just a little bit. And then I went in and I started darkening it. In some places I even put more blue in. Like I decided I wanted more blue in here. And then I added the black crayon down here to make it darker. Oh, and I go, oh no, I don't like that. I think I'll make it darker and I'll add some black crayon over it. Okay, you can put black crayon on top of anything. So if you start with blue, which is kind of fun, and then add the black, you can get white values, blue values, dark blue values, and dark black values. So it, values means how dark and light it is. So it can be pretty cool. So that was, this is all crayon. And then my third one, it's just the hardest. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is hard. And I would, I would do one of these two first. And if you think you wanted to really challenge yourself, you can use Sharpie. This one's the hard one. And I'll tell you why it's hard. If you do it wrong, you can't fix it. The other two you can fix. This one, if you make a black mark, you can erase a Sharpie. So this one was done with a fine point Sharpie and an extra fine Sharpie. So I used two different Sharpies for this one to do this one. Cause you'll notice all these little teeny lines and these dots and these lines here to get all the shading because I've only got an ink pen. So the only way I can shade it is with little dots and lines because there's no way to shade it like you would with a pencil. So this one is only for those of you who really want to challenge yourself, okay? I recommend if you've got black and blue crayons that you go for this one first, or if you have access to a sketching pencil, you go for this one. And if you don't have either one, just go for the line drawing and have fun shading because you can shade this. You guys will notice I can make these lines darker and I can definitely shade this so this drawing looks better. I just can't get the really, really, really dark colors. Okay, makes sense? The nice thing about looking at my drawing is that you can actually see where did Mrs. Johnson make it really, really dark and where did she make it really, really light? The light areas is where I think the light would hit it. And the dark areas are where I would think it would get no light. So if you look at his eyes that are rounder, the corners would be darker and the center would be lighter because the light would shine on that shiny black plastic. How are you guys doing? Okay, so today, what, what should you do? First, you wanna take your whole drawing and trace everything with a school pencil 
unless you're going to go to Sharpie. Okay, trace it all with the school, school pencil. Once you get it right, then you need to decide how much shading do you want to do? Do you want to just stop here or do you want to start adding more shading? Do you want to go to crayon? If you want to go to crayon, you're ready for it right now. I'm going to grab my crayon one here and that's why I didn't finish it. So I went in and I just, I really colored everything blue first. And once I had everything blue, I started thinking about where is it the darkest? Where would it be the darkest? And the beauty is, I've got a drawing here for you so you can see it. So any place that it's super, super dark, I'm gonna take my black crayon and I'm gonna color it pressing so hard it makes your hand hurt. And after a while you're like, oh my gosh, this is so much work, okay? That's how I did it. And any place that it's super light, I only did light, light blue. And by the way, just a basic blue crayon or I left it white. Those are my only options. So this one up here at the top is blue and white and light gray. There's a lot of color in it. 